as much as our emotions want to tell us, it's not worth buying silver, we're losing money, it's going down, we're the lemmings of the investment community. The fact is the metal is being drained from the two biggest storage centers of silver in the world. Somebody is buying that. Today, we're gonna to go into an article by Ronan, the destroyer Manly, who happens to have the manliest name in all of the silver community. How could you have a name more manly than Ronan Manly? And his pronouns are Ronan and Manly. This article by Ronan shows that 280 million ounces of silver have been drained from London and the COMEX combined since Silver Squeeze. So if you think there's been no demand for silver, then you're wrong. The silver to S&P 500 ratio has hit a new 20 year low and numbers from 1980 show that stocks in terms of silver are going to fall about 99%, which means that silver in stock terms is going to climb about 100 fold by the end of the end game. And finally, we are now challenging a silver to commodities ratio trend line that has been in place since August, 2020. Each time we have tested this trend line, we have failed it. This is about the seventh time we are testing this trend line. And let's see if we can break through now. Silver Report is brought to you by Fortuna Silver Mines. And we have a technical alert on this stock over here. It hit a low on May 28th, 2019 at 240. That is where it bounced off of last week at about 238. So we are at major support here. It was broken once during the March 2020 crash along with the support of every single gold and silver stock in the world. It is never comfortable buying stocks low, but part of buying low and selling high is, well, you know, buying low. And now to Ronan Manley's article. This was in Bullion Star, I believe. Ronan is one of the experts at tabulating all the gold and silver that is claimed to be held by the LVMA and the COMEX. Every so often he comes up with a zinger, and I think this is one of them. As of July 26, 2022, he says, a massive 19,514 tons of silver claimed to be held by the LVMA in London vaults is held by silver-backed ETFs and private client investors. It has nothing to do with London's ability to underpin the physical OTC market. What he's talking about here is that the LBMA claims to have like 31,000 tons or something of silver that is held in their vault. And this is true, except 19,114 tons of it is held by, a, by ETFs and other private vaults, which cannot be sold to other people. I mean, they're owned by the ETFs and the private vaults. This is not available to underpin the market. So he says only 11,509 tons remain to back the physical market. This is free floating silver that can be used to be sold or back other investment funds or whatever needs to be done. Now that number 11,509, let's go to the next slide. 11,509 tons, that is 370 million ounces. Now, if you think that Silver Squeeze has not done anything since it was launched in February, 2021, think Again, ignore the spot price for a second and just listen to these numbers. LBMA has lost 182.7 million ounces of silver since June 2021, and I will show you the chart in the next slide. Next line here, COMEX has lost 96.5 million registered ounces since silver squeeze. Combined, that is 280 million ounces of silver total drained from the paper silver markets in 18 months, meaning the LBMA which has 370 million ounces left, can theoretically be drained of remaining silver in about a year or two with continued physical buying. It doesn't matter where you buy it from or what you buy it from, silver is silver. It's silver. Eventually it has to be replenished from the big grandpappies at LBMA and COMEX. So it really doesn't matter where you buy it from, just get a good price. And now here are the charts. You are probably familiar with this chart if you have ever seen any other silver reports. This is the registered supply of silver, which has collapsed from 152 million around here at this peak to right now around 55.5 million. That is a total of about 96 million ounces, near 100 million ounces since February 2021. And here we have the LBMA, which doesn't get as much attention here because I don't know the market as well. However, the chart is obvious. We have silver in May 2021 at 1.18 billion ounces, now down to 997 million ounces, below 1 billion for the first time since 2017. This huge drain is because the price of silver is way lower than it should be, which is why it's being drained from these supply centers. As much as our emotions want to tell us, it's not worth buying silver, we're losing money, it's going down, we're the lemmings of the investment community. The fact is the metal is being drained from the two biggest storage centers of silver in the world. 
somebody is buying that. Next chart here, we have the silver to the S&P 500 ratio at a new 20-year low. And there's something phenomenal that I want to show you about this chart going back to 1980. Here we have, again, what is a classic bottoming pattern of a triple bottom, marginally broken, and then reversing. We have here the silver to S&P 500 ratio from back in 2018, hitting a low of 0 0.0048, hitting it again here in March 2020, hitting it again here in late 2021, I think that's November 2021 or so, and breaking below it and reversing back up to 0 0.0048. This is a marginal break of a triple bottom, and that is very often a sign that the capitulators have capitulated. But I want to show you what this chart means in the context of 1980. Remember this number over here. This is the high. You see here where it says H and where my cursor is 0 0.0382. That was the high in 2011 of silver in stock terms and S&P 500 terms. The high was 0 0.0. Three, eight. Now let's go back in time. The new low of the silver to S&P 500 ratio just hit at 0 0.0044. The low until now is 0 0.0048, marginal break and then reversal. January 21st, 1980, what was that high of silver to the S&P 500 ratio? Well, I looked it up. Silver was 50, the S&P 500 was 112.9 or something like that. So if you take that ratio, it's 0.446. But what was the August 2011 high in this ratio? 0 0.0382, meaning 1980 high in stock terms was an order of magnitude higher than the 2011 highs in terms of stocks for silver, which means 1980 was the precipice of a true dollar collapse and end game for the currency. We were almost there, but Volcker saved the situation by raising rates to about 21%, which got the fiat dollar rolling in its current form, and we are still running on the fumes of that tank filled by that Fed chairman 40 years ago. And so, if we are now at 0 0.0044, and the high all time was 0.44, that's easy, that's a multiplication factor of 100, meaning stocks in the end game scenario where silver returns to a 15 to 1 monetary ratio with gold and gold hits about 30,000 or so between 30 and 40,000 of 100% backed liabilities on the Federal Reserve balance sheet, which is the definition of a gold standard end game set by the market. That means that stocks are set to fall about 99% in silver terms into the end game. When exactly? I'm sorry, I cannot say. But I do know that this is the end game which puts silver somewhere between $500 and $1,000 an ounce, depending on how big the Fed's balance sheet is at that time. When will the reversal happen? When the Fed pivots. That will be the beginning of the end. Exactly when it will pivot, I believe in the next few months, as its current monetary policy is forcing, eventually, a financial crisis, which is already starting to bubble. Now, finally, the challenging commodities trend line. This is a silver to commodities ratio with the GNX, which is primarily commodities by production mainly oil. We see here since August 2020, we had a trend line established at the highs of silver, both in dollar terms and in commodities terms, August 2020, when we just hit $30. Ever since then, silver has been falling precipitously in commodity terms. And this trend line has been tested once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, between seven and nine times, depending on what you want to qualify as a technical test. But this trend line has been intact since August 2020. And when it breaks, it's going to break hard. We are testing it once again, despite the lows in silver. It is all commodities that are falling right now because we are on the precipice of a new financial crisis. And that's what happened. People chase liquidity and they dump whatever they can to get it. Well, it's at this point in silver reports that I usually say things like the silver boys are separated from the silver men. But really, what is the separation? There has to be an understanding that there is no alternative other than returning to metallic money, which is gold for the banks and silver for the public, as it has always been. A pyramid can only go one way, and that is up. And when it collapses, the only thing that is left is the base. And the base, from way back for 1873, 
was silver, which means temporally, right? The Misesian regression principle, which requires prices to go back into the past, the base to all the entire pyramid is silver, and from there, gold, and from there, everything built up. The only question is how far away are we from the collapse of the pyramid? And if you look at every single fiat money supply, you will see that we are headed vertical. There is no stopping a vertical ascent other than a major financial crisis, which will trigger the final pivot of all central banks and the destruction of paper or digital money in whatever form. That's when the old ratios will be reestablished, the old 1980 ratios, which was just a preview to what numerically an endgame would look like. We are going back there. We are going back there soon, definitely within your lifetimes, and that is what has to be recognized.